Welcome, welcome everyone. So happy you're here with us to take this dive into this wild world of ourselves, plant prana, our type, and uh, yeah, coming home to ourselves using our human design. We're going to just take another minute here while everyone renames themselves. We have uh, generators, manifesting generators, two projectors. Um, Laura, I don't know if you can rename yourself. Yes, Charlotte, I did make you co-host. Thank you. So, as in, can you put your type so we know who you are? And does everybody have their oil, either their plant prana oil or great? All right, Nancy, you got the whole kit. Um, your oil. Uh, or the single oil if you do not have the um, plant prana oil. Hello, Alicia, nice to see you. Please put your type next to your name and put in the chat where you're from and from zero to 10, the level of knowledge you have about your type. Hey, Barry, nice to see you. As in you're a reflector, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rename you if that's okay. So happy to have you with us. The 1% is here. <laughs> All right. Um, a manifester, yay. We've got a manifester with us. Um, and more projectors. Great. All right. Well, I think we are arrived. Uh, we can let people continue to join as they do. But let's get started with those of you who are here. Again, you're going to need your type oil for today. We are going to spend quite a bit of time in that deep dive with our oils. So let's just take a moment and honor the time we're giving ourselves. This is a precious time to pause and reflect and call on our awareness, our, our beingness to support us on our journey. We're looking at where are we off track with ourselves? Where are we on track with ourselves? To do that, we look at what do we feel? What are we thinking? Um, What's our organizing principle? Are we aligned with our blueprint or are we unaligned? So for those of you who don't know, I'm sure you do. I'm Robin Wynn and I, I've written with Greg Toes the book, Human Design and Essential Oils, along with a bunch of books on human design. If you don't have that book yet, we will put the link in the chat, the essential oil link so that you can look at that and work with that um, on your own. Greg, I just want to introduce Greg for a moment. I'm going to spotlight you, Greg. Uh, this is our beloved friend, Greg, who is a master with oils and healing and the mystical aspect of living on this planet, along with the very practical aspect um, on all levels. And he is our essential oil alchemist. He created all the essential oils and divined um, which oils go with which type. And he is a huge asset and gift in this process. So anything you want to add here, Greg, before I continue? No, I, um, I don't like to talk about myself. So uh, like I always like to just get down to business. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we are going to do that, but I did want to put you in the screen here to so sweet. Um, yeah, bring you with your beautiful Tonkas in the, into the room. All right. So. What I'd like to do, um, just to begin with the um, 
the dive, I guess we could say, is to invite you just to come into your body, just to bring your awareness to your body. So just go ahead and close your eyes for a moment and become aware of your physical body, your precious human birth. Just begin by just taking a moment to, to smile at yourself and welcome yourself. You're, you're here on this planet. You're here to bring a quality of light, a, a unique essence, your own nectar. A lot of times that gets clouded over, that gets conditioned. We forget who we are. We forget the magnificence of who we are. So we're making a turn. We're making a turn back to our entelechy, our potential, our, our greatness. And to, to do that, we just begin by simply being our human selves. So sensing your arms and legs, sensing your hands and feet, just moving your spine a little bit, getting comfortable in your seat. Really just asking yourself to be present here in these moments. We're so easily drawn out. Our particles go out to the external world and we're drawing them back to this moment to now. And now just like you're turning the dial on a, a TV, we're just shifting our focus to our human design blueprint. You may or may not have a picture that, of that in your mind's eye. If not, just picture a, a triangle with nine, nine centers in it and take a moment to look at your sacral, the, the middle, center of that triangle, the lower center of that triangle, is it colored in red in your chart or is it white or open? That's the first indicator of who we are in the world, how we operate in the world. So if that square, it's a square in the, in the chart, that square is colored in red, you're either a generator or a manifesting generator. You're here to have sustainable energy. You're here to respond to life with a yes or a no. You're, there's an excitement, there's a aliveness, a vitality that comes with that defined sacral center. You have a, an inner GPS that guides you with that yes, no binary, yes, that I think of working dogs, think of dogs, they smell this, oh, I don't want to go there. Yeah, I want to go there. Just where we're drawn by that sacral response, very alive and dynamic. And if we're not aligned with ourselves, we're doing things we have a no for, and we're burning out our energy. We're losing the joie de vivre. We're losing our joy of life. We're, we're depressed or unhappy or suffering. That's kind of, this is a very simplistic view, but it gives you the flavor of what we're looking at. How do we align with that sacral? If we have an open, that square is white, we have different gifts and different capacities. So with that defined sacral, we're here to work, we're here to build, we're here to be engaged with life in a very passionate and um responsive we're here to respond to life with that open sacral we have three different paths we may be taken with the projector which is 21 percent of us we're taking in the world we're receiving the world at a very profound level we're understanding the energies that are moving around us and we're waiting for the right moment to step in and give our guidance 
but we have to wait. We have to be in awareness of right timing. If we come in before our time, it's like jumping into a jump rope and we get all tangled and we don't get to give the gifts we're here to give. So that very powerful state, that presence of, of magnetism that's drawing the people to us who need our guidance as projector, who are waiting for us, but they can't see us until we are in that space of perception and awareness and right timing. So if we are off with ourselves, we are not being heard. We're not having the voice that we so that's so needed in our culture and in our relationships. So that is the one of the signals of being off. And perhaps we're thinking we should be generators or manifesting generators and we're actively doing, doing, doing to try to get seen and try to get acknowledged. And that just is burning us out. That would be unaligned projector. If we're a manifester with an open sacral and a, a motor going to our throat, we're here to impact. We're here to get things going, get things moving. If we're unaligned, we're not informing people about what we're doing and they're pushing us away or our impact isn't being supported or allowed and we feel cut off, we feel alone and castrated could be one of the words for the, it could be a word for any of us, but really for the manifestors who have so much power and so much force and so much capacity to impact. If we are around people who are, you know, jumping in on us while we're talking, who, uh, aren't available for what we have to offer, we can be off track with ourselves. Again, diminished, the, the grandeur, the power of who we are is diminished. So that would be unaligned. If we're one of the projectors, of reflectors, the 1%, less than 1% of the population, I almost don't even know what to say. With the reflector who's completely open, all their centers are white, they're taking in everything and reflecting back to the world. They are wise about the potential of each one of us, and yet they're also seeing the lack of living our potential and can get depressed or disappointed in humanity. So an aligned reflector is living in an environment that is healthy. An unaligned reflector will be living in an environment where they're sick, where they're not doing well. An aligned reflector will be taking their time to bring what they have to bring, to make the decisions that they are here to make. And again, for the rest of us, we are in a place of learning about the reflector. We are kind of, um, it's, it's like being in nature. To be with reflector is like being in nature. It's a, it's a deep state of presence. So if our reflectors are trying to be generators or manifesting generators or manifestors, we all lose out on the gift they have to bring. So taking a moment and just checking in with yourself, am I aligned? Am I unaligned? How far off am I? Now, again, there's other pieces of the chart that we'll, we are in alignment with or out of alignment with, but this just big swath of, am I getting the rest I need if I have an open sacral? Am I connected to my aliveness, my passion, following my yeses and nos if I have a defined sacral? Just taking a moment to check in with yourself.
And this is not a judgment. This is just an awareness. Wherever we are is perfect. That is our starting place. And we come back to that at the end of working with the oils to see if anything in our perception has shifted. So just feeling in, am I exhausted or am I replenished? Am I at peace with my type or am I at odds with my type? Do I have a story that I should be a different type or a different type is better? Just taking a moment to see if there's any any information your type has for you? Does it have a message? What might that be? If not, that's fine. And the last thing we're gonna do before we jump in with Greg into our type oil is just to be clear today what is your intention what what would you like to walk away with what what would you like to is there something you would like to feel in relationship to your type maybe it's as simple as i'm more aligned with my type i know i know what i need to do to align with my type Taking a breath. When you're ready, Greg, jump in with the empowerment. Hey, we're going to do the plant prana empowerment technique, which establishes a deeper connection between you and the blend for um, your, your type. And this goes back to what uh, you would do like in shamanic practices and the viewpoint being that the plants act as like a guide or a teacher. It shifts the, the energy, it shifts your awareness, it shifts your consciousness and allows you to kind of process something that your mind can grab onto. You know, a lot of times we're talking about something that's very subtle or very abstract and in a way, the, the mind, especially the logical mind, really kind of draws upon past experiences, sensory information, you know, pieces of, of information that maybe we've read or studied or memorized. And when you're trying to step out of the box, so to speak, you're trying to have a new experience. And it's not something that the logical mind can make happen. You know, it's an experience. It's it's something new. And so the oils uh, act as like a guide to go through and facilitate this. And so, you know, we're going to go through and we're going to do the plant empowerment technique and we'll do a bit of um, a type practice. But also, you know, when we have these opportunities, when we get together with Robin and myself and you guys, the thing that we also like to do is maybe do little experiments or even take it to something deeper because here is what we've presented, but it's simply some steps. There's more steps past this, but you know, we want to do one step at a time. And as you kind of gather with us and we do these practices, we're able to accelerate the practice and do it a bit deeper. And so Let's start today with the empowerment technique. So you have your bottle, and right now you're just observing the plant, what this kind of represents. You know, you're looking 
to this plant, this blend of plants, to help you shift your awareness, to shift your perception, to shift your consciousness, just to move some energy, right? You're, you're trying to have a different experience, right? So right now, you're just simply looking at the bottle. You're, you're kind of forming your intention, or a better way of saying it is you're allowing for something to happen. You're allowing for the process, right? So just visually connect with the bottle and the plant. And now that you've done this, let's go ahead and have you open the bottle, shake it up a little bit or tap it on your hand. You can kind of do a little thing like that. And then you can smell directly from the bottle or you can roll a little bit on the skin and then smell it from your hand. Begin to take long, slow, deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. This is for maximum efficiency for harnessing the energy of the plant. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Long, slow, deep breath. Just be still. Notice what happens. Now, using the plant is much stronger than just using your mind, right? The sense of smell is one of the quickest ways to shift your thinking and your behavior. Your body is wired for that. Part of how you thrive in the environment is through your senses, but one of the strong ones is the sense of smell. You think about, you go into the refrigerator and you open it up and you're like, is this milk still good? And you smell it or it smells fine, right? So your thought process on that milk is dependent on how it smelled, right? That is a very simplistic way of looking at it. We take in all kinds of pieces of information all the time based on just the sense of smell, right? Even how we interact with people sometimes is the byproduct of what you would call pheromones or, or like a scent or a smell that the person might be putting off, like little pieces of um, hormones that might be in the air or little things that hit your receptor sites based on um, even the environment. You know, if you think about going to a, an open house and you're you're looking at a house and you walk in and it smells not so great and you look around and you're like, yeah, the house is okay. You know, it could be an amazing house, but it smelled like old dirty clothes. You're not that interested. A house that maybe is not that great and you walk in and it smells like warm baking bread or warm baking cinnamon rolls. You're like, this house is amazing, right? It's based on that sensory piece of information, right? It shifted how you perceived what is in front of you, right? It's hard for the mind to do it, but when you harness the sense of smell, you can make shifts very, very quickly. Begin inhaling the oil again. You're taking long, slow, deep breaths in through the nose, out 
through the mouth. Keep inhaling, and I'm just going to keep putting in little pieces of information. Scent is one of the easiest ways to access the unconscious, the subconscious, the pre-conscious thoughts. Pre-conscious thoughts are things that are not necessarily in your mind, but if you put your awareness on it, you're able to draw it forward very quickly, right? And so the breath combined with scent is a very way a very easy way to go deep into the psyche go deep into your energy body go deep into behaviors so just pause and be still how did, how did it make you feel you think about it how do you feel right now just observe your body your emotions your mind how about your thoughts where is your mind your emotions Did you feel something happen in your body? Let's put the cap back on for a moment and just be still and sit with it. Now, we're going to practice something called abdominal breathing. So you're not going to use the plant at first. We're just going to practice this abdominal breathing for a moment. So if you take your right hand and you put it on your chest, you take your left hand and you put it on your abdomen, right? So now as you inhale, as you inhale, the right hand on your chest really shouldn't be moving that much. Ideally, it's not moving at all, right? So when you inhale, your left hand it's naturally pushed out because the abdomen is expanding, right? As you exhale, right, you're compressing your lungs to push more air out. So the abdomen compresses and your left hand comes in. So as you inhale, the hand goes out. As you exhale, the hand comes in, right? The right hand shouldn't be moving or, you know, at first it's a little bit hard. It moves a little bit, but if you train yourself, over a period of time, just this breath alone reduces the stress response, right? And stress happens anytime we're pushed out of mm, our box, you could say, right? Whenever we kind of feel like I've got everything organized, I'm set, and then something comes along, even something you want and something good and goes, let's shift. The body has a stress response, even if it's something that you desire, right? It's just um, it's what happens when we shift or change. So by utilizing this breath, right, you're enhancing your ability to shift. You're enhancing your ability to move into better alignment, right? Moving into better alignment is a kind of a change, you know? We, even if we're super out of alignment, we kind of organize everything. It was like, I'm out of alignment, but I'm comfortable, right? We want to be in better alignment and be comfortable with that, right? So that involves change. So this abdominal breathing, for one, helps you to connect deeper to the plant, but it also helps you to facilitate a greater level of, the ability to shift or change or to align, right? So you're doing multiple things here. So we're going to practice. Your, your right hand's on your chest, your left hand's on your abdomen, right? You're going to take long, slow, deep breaths. 
still in through your nose, out through your mouth. 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 And then just pause and be still. We're not even inhaling the oil right now. We're just working the process. Now, a way to intensify the reduction of the stress response as you inhale, you put a little pause before the exhalation. And before you inhale, you put a little pause, right? So we're going to practice that. I'm going to guide you. So again, your right hand's on your chest, just so you can monitor. Your left hand's on your abdomen. Take a long, slow, deep breath in through the nose and pause. Exhale slowly and pause. Inhale again. Long, slow, deep breath in through the nose. Pause. Exhale through the mouth slowly. And pause. Inhale slowly through the nose. Hold. Exhale slowly through the mouth. And pause. Inhale slowly through the nose. Pause. Exhale slowly through the mouth. And just let go of everything. Let your breath regulate. Notice how you feel. We didn't even use an oil there. We just did abdominal breathing. So what we did is we calmed down our stress response. So when we go to connect with the plant, we have a deeper potential for connection. Now open up your bottle and inhale. Just take some normal, long, slow, deep breaths. Notice, does it smell the same or does it start to smell a little different? Taking some long, slow, deep breaths. And then pause and be still. Put the cap back on the bottle. How do you feel compared to 10 to 15 minutes ago? What thoughts 
arise in your mind. Regardless of what they're about, be it your type or whatever, just observe the thoughts that arise. As you go deeper into the psyche, sometimes just these little odd things start to arise. No need to do anything with them. You just simply observe them. Just like when you pour a bottle of bubble water in a glass, the bubbles kind of rise up and then pop. That's what you're letting happen with these thoughts in your mind. Now, we're going to go a little bit deeper. So pinch the tip of your nose. You're just pinching it so that it becomes easy to have your awareness on the tip of your nose. You don't have to keep holding it. Just pinch it so there's a little stimulation. And then your eyes are closed and your awareness is on the tip of your nose. By putting your awareness on the tip of your nose, it helps to anchor the mind. It's another way of saying it quiets the mind. It holds the mind still. Energetically, by putting your awareness on the tip of the nose, for those of you who do yoga or meditation, it actually moves up kundalini energy. No, not a lot, just a little. But it has an activating effect on your energy body, on your energy centers. It helps to strengthen the mind. It helps to reboot the nervous system, you could say, or upgrade the nervous system. With your awareness on the tip of your nose, you're not inhaling an oil right now. We're just doing breathing. You're going to do more of the abdominal breathing. So long, slow, deep breath in through the nose. Slowly exhale through the mouth. Slowly inhale through the nose. Pause. Slowly exhale through the mouth. Pause. Inhale slowly. Pause. Exhale slowly. Pause. Inhale slowly. Pause. Exhale slowly. Pause. Inhale slowly. Pause. Exhale slowly. Just let everything go. Let your breath regulate. You can let go of your awareness on the tip of your nose. Just let your body acclimate for a moment. By doing this process with your awareness on the tip of your nose, you're diminishing the tendency to disregard new information. The logical mind, you could say, specializes in that. The intuitive mind embraces it. We've made the mind a little bit more flexible. So let's uncap the oil. And again, take long, slow, deep breaths. In through the nose, out through the mouth.
We are still taking long, slow, deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And then pause and let go. Just notice how you feel. Notice your mind, your thoughts, your awareness, your emotion, your body. We've made a mental connection. So now let's make an emotional connection. When we want to make things happen, it's always good to have the emotions as an ally rather than something that opposes what we're trying to do. So the way that we do this with the plants is you take the plant, you look at it for a moment, and then you put the plant on your heart and your awareness is on the heart. Your awareness is on your heart. The plant is on your heart. Just hold it there for a moment. Let this connection strengthen. Let these energies mix. Separation is an illusion. There is only oneness. Begin experiencing the oneness between you and the plant. Now, uncap the bottle and begin inhaling again. And then just pause and let go. Notice what's happening. 
Notice what you feel. If you think of this plant, it represents a path to a better you, a better alignment with your potential. Right? And so think of times where maybe a partner or a relative or one of your children, you see them and you just feel moments of such love for the person. Right? Try to... Think that way about the plant. Even if you recall like somebody that makes you very happy and then shift your awareness to the plant, radiate love and mercy to the plant. The little beings that are in charge of helping the plants to grow and thrive in the, in the earth, they are not able to experience love and mercy. And show by radiating love and mercy, let's just say you have the undivided attention of the plant. I think it was St. Thomas Aquinas that said, everything that's in creation as an energy being that helps bring it forth. Radiate love and mercy to the aliveness of this plant. You want your higher potential to meet with its higher potential. Open up the cap and begin to inhale. Just pause and be still. Notice what you feel. Notice your body, your emotions, your thoughts. What bubbles up in the mind? Is the mind quiet? A quiet mind does not mean a sleepy mind. A quiet mind means an observing mind. You're turning on the witness. Now, you're going to take 
one hand and hold it out like so. Put the bottle in your hand and then put the other hand over the top. Okay. And we're going to do a prayer that's part blessing and part transmutation. Okay. We want to again experience the highest potential from this plant. We will use the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, which is a prayer of transmutation. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Make me an instrument of thy love and thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Allow me to be a vessel of love. Where there is injury, I will pardon. Where there is darkness, I will cultivate the light. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, I will cultivate joy. Make me an instrument of thy peace. Uncap the bottle and begin inhaling. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Long, slow, deep breaths. Now just pause and be still. Notice your body. Now we want to harness the energy of thought. 
So you're going to hold the bottle up to the area between your eyebrows, like so. So hold it up to your eyebrows, between the eyebrows, and say, thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping me to have greater alignment with my true nature and to accelerate my healing process, my evolutionary process. Thank you for helping me to have greater alignment with my true nature and to accelerate my evolutionary process. my evolutionary process into a better alignment to my higher potential, my truer self. Now uncap the bottle and inhale. And then pause and be still. Notice your mind, your thoughts, your emotions. Notice your body, your spine. Notice your breath. And before we do this next step, this is the plant empowerment technique that we just done. You don't have to do this every time you sit down to work with the oil. This is about establishing a deeper connection to the plant. You can do this from time to time. You know, even if you only do it once, it makes the oil more potent for you. If you want to step up the activity when you're doing these oil processes, always can come back to the plant empowerment technique. Things are very strong on their own, but I think there are several of you that would like to step it up a notch from time to time. This is one of the ways. So now that we've done that, let's do a little experiment. Begin inhaling your oil and your awareness is between your eyebrows. You're taking long, slow, deep breaths. Your awareness is between your eyebrows, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth.
and then just be still. Notice your mind. What thoughts arise? Observe your thoughts. If there's no thoughts, then observe the quietness of the mind. Continue to observe whatever is happening, be it thoughts arising or quietness. As you observe these aspects, gently inhale the oil, keeping your awareness on the thoughts or the stillness. Long, slow, deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Pause and let go. Notice your awareness, your consciousness. You're out of the logical mind. You have engaged a process, a movement, a shift. Your awareness is between your eyebrows. Again, you're taking long, slow, deep breaths. In through the nose, out through the mouth. And then pause and let go. Let's do this one more time. 
long, slow, deep breaths in through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. Long, slow, deep breath. Just pause and be still. Where do you feel this in your body? Do you feel a movement, a tension, a clamping down, a shift? Observe what is happening in your body. As an experiment, inhale your oil as you observe this aspect in your body. Just be still. Just let everything go. Let your attention and awareness on whatever part of your body, your emotions, your mind, just let it all go. Just sit and be still. And Robin, I turn it back over to you. Thank you, Greg. I'm going to keep both of us spotlighted here. And wow. What I know when I do this plant powerment technique with an oil, it's like making a connection, a, um, it's like getting to know someone, meeting someone, um, it supercharges whatever I do with that oil afterwards. So don't underestimate what we've just done here today. I'd ask you just to take a moment and hold your type oil and just feel it. Just feel your connection to it now. This is a friend. This is a support for you. Whenever you feel like you're stressing or overworking or off track, just you can even just hold the oil.
We wanted to take a few minutes here to see if anyone had any experiences you'd like to share, any questions, any thoughts. So you can go ahead and raise your hand or put, uh, put your questions in the chat. What did you experience? What did you notice? Lodi, incredibly peaceful, like being home, right? That's what the oils do. They, they take us home. They totally take us home. Um, I wanted to thank you, Greg, for leading us through that so beautifully. I really felt, um, oh, it was so interesting, actually. It was, it was a whole dance of things. Um, <laughs> but ultimately, I think I, I felt more settled uh, and just the layers, it was so interesting. It kept going and going. So that was mm -hmm. interesting to watch that experience and the way I was relating to that. But um, or I should say, and um, yeah, I felt a real empowerment that I didn't expect uh, in connecting um, as intentionally and sweetly as I did. So thank you. Oh, very nice. Good. I'm happy for you. Hmm. I mean, That's we're just kind of following the mechanics of our physiology and our emotions and our mind. And, you know, you can do that with other things, but here we're doing it with plants. But, you know, even co connection has mechanics. And, you, you know, if we follow the mecha mechanics, it produces a result. You know, the mechanics are something you can depend on. Like it, if you engage them, it does something. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, Delete. Yeah, you really spoke quite poignantly the, the power and the potential that I call it the X factor. We never know where we're going to be taken when we engage in what Greg's calling the mechanics that that connection to the plant, you know, it's, it's, it's almost unspeakable uh, what happens. So thank you so much, Delete. Um, Kathy says bliss. Nancy says even more relaxing than last time kept falling mm. asleep. Mm, good. Yeah. Falling asleep is a good thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Super good thing. If you think about when we experience our intuitive mind, most times when we have that experience, it's while we're sleeping in dream time. You know, the everyday mind is really good at doing the things that need to be done, but it's hard for us to be in the intuitive mind through the whole day. You know, a lot of times we step out of it more at the end of the day or or if you're in a relaxed state. And so if you even see pictures of the drawings of the prophets back in the old old days in ancient times, a lot of times they're laying down relaxed or they're asleep. And, you know, there's like birds fl floating over them that are a symbol of communication with, you know, either the earth or the divine. And it just shows that when we tap into the more intuitive side, that's the side that is going to allow us to shift. That's the side that's going to allow us to let go of something or move out of a behavior or a thought process. The logical mind, it can do it, but you know, over the years I've always joked about that it leaves claw marks all over it because it's so, uh, it's identified with it. And in the intuitive mind, it just kind of floats away like a butterfly. You know, it, you you kind of drift into a greater potential in that intuitive state. And so if you start to feel a little sleepy or you feel like, like, oh, I could take a little nap, 
allow yourself to do that. Like, you know, just lean into it. Like if you conk out for 10 or 15 minutes, um, you know, I think that's good. You know, when we do classes, uh, people will say, oh, I'm so sorry I fell asleep. I was like, to me, that's a great compliment that you were able to let go and go into that more intuitive state. You know, it shows that there's a letting go. You come back to the into um, the logical mind, but it's hard to train yourself to let go of something, right? And so you're kind of training yourself to be able to step out of the ordinary everyday mind into this mind full of potential and then step back into the normal everyday mind. And for a while it involves falling asleep or getting sleepy or relaxed, but after a while it begins to harmonize and uh, those two aspects become one functioning unit, but it takes a while. Yeah, it is definitely a process. So thank you, Greg. Um, Margo is saying she feels a groundedness that's been missing recently. So Margo's a manifester. She has nice. a question. My literal mind wonders what you mean when you say, quote unquote, the plant. Is it the plants used to make yeah. the type oil? Yeah, you, you know, different traditions kind of address this in different ways. And so it's just a way to say, instead of saying just essential oils or oils, you know, you look at it as um, like a, something that's a part of a creative process. And I find that when you just think of it as some liquid in a bottle, it kind of disconnects you from nature a little bit. So when you use the term plant, you're still talking about the oils in the bottle. You know, those are are essences that came from the particular plant, but it also acknowledges that this is something that's in creation. It's not just some product that's in a bottle. And so the plant or the plants just represent this process that happens in nature. And if you look at plants, plants really respond to their environment. You know, they they develop certain qualities because of their environment. And one of my more favorite stories about this is myrrh, you know. I think we all know myrrh and we know what to do, certain things. You know, it's good for pain and inflammation and people use it in spiritual practices and the three wise men gave it to Christ. But if you look at myrrh from the plant's point of view, it grows in very dry, hot regions, you know, very, very hot. Like the temperature can get up to like 120 degrees right? Fahrenheit. And, and so that's almost difficult for anything to, to grow there. Like that, that is so hot, so dry. And the sun just beats down on these plants. There's not really shade. And so what happens to this plant as the heat gets more intense it starts to crack the the outer layers of the branches right the branches start to crack and this resin kind of starts to seep out right and as this resin seeps out the more intense the sun the more it begins to um, uh, engage like this volatile aspect of that resin and it puts scent up into the air and whenever you're smelling something and you're smelling scent it is actually literally the particles from the plant you know how you're smelling that is you're smelling plant particles right and so what happens with the myrrh the more intense the sun becomes the more it starts to create this little cloud around the plant of these molecules that act as like a little cloud. And as these resins diffuse up into the air, it creates this cloud that then protects the plant from the sun. And you could say the myrrh is very good for inflammation. It's very good for pain. Um, in certain traditions, like in the Jewish and Christian tradition, they would say if you put myrrh on the forehead 
um, allow it to drip down into the body. And so one translation would be that you should keep myrrh on your forehead until the myrrh like drips down. But when you put myrrh on the forehead, it allows for soul energy to come into the body. This idea of dripping down is every time you put myrrh on the forehead, it allows a little more soul energy to drip in. It gives it more life force. And we see that as our personal experience. But if you look at the plant trying to thrive in the environment, you can see that the plant is trying to strengthen its connection and its ability to generate life force. It's trying to thrive. It's trying to be its better self. And just to say oil in the bottle for me feels like it takes away a little something from the journey of the plant to get to where it's at for it to be able to do for us what we're trying to, to do. And so you know, when I traveled with a medicine man, we would say the plant people or the plant person. But um, I think just saying plant is is good enough. But thank well, you, Greg. Mind yeah. likes that a lot. What's that? My literal mind likes what you just said a lot. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> it's interesting. Plants are fascinating. You know, they're they're quite fascinating. They all and have their little personalities and their little, you know, they even have plants that they like and that they don't like, you know, plants, plants don't get along with each other, just like people don't get along with each other. You know, it's, it's quite um, interesting to watch the dynamics. Thank you, Greg. Uh, Alicia has her hand up, but before we bring you in, Alicia, I just want to also piggyback on that and say, uh, one of the things I like that Greg has said in the past that, that really responds for me or resonates with me is that we're awakening the teacher, the plant teacher, mm -hmm. we're giving the plant permission to be our teacher and to take us places where it might not if we hadn't invited it in. Mm -hmm. So I just want to name that. Um, yeah, so Alicia. Hey, thank you. That was really was oh. also frozen. Hang on, your 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 video is going, your uh voice is going okay. in and out. So try again. Okay, is it moment? No. So go ahead, let's try. Okay. There was a moment at the end. Focus Maybe turn it. your video off, Alicia, for a second, and let's see if we can hear you then. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, Isn't we that can. Working better. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Just... Yeah, my doing something weird. Uh, and um, there was a moment in the meditation toward the end where we were focusing between our eyes, mm -hmm. um, and you were asking the question. Or I don't know if it was a question, but it was a, a dichotomy between thought or quiet. Mm -hmm. And I, I started to, I was seeing visions oh, and I, yeah. and I was really curious. I mean, I was, I was really in, a, it was just almost static um, that didn't feel like they were thought or mm -hmm. quiet. Mm -hmm. So I was out about that. Yeah, you know, our, our logical mind sees a lot of details, but the intuitive mind sees more in imagery and um, will get flashes of insight. And, you know, you could call it flashes of intuition, you could call it flashes of clairvoyance, um, but you'll start to get imagery and, you know, sometimes it might be a symbol or something or like I always like to call them the commercials of the psyche, like where you just get this little like 30 second thing that runs and it's just like this, like little commercial that runs and you're like, hmm, yeah, I would like some more of that or I should stay away from that or, you know, whatever it is. But it's a little piece of imagery that plays out that is your intuitive side trying to communicate with the logical side is a great way to say it. 
Awesome. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you, Greg. I know we're coming. We just have another minute. Um, but Azin did want to ask something or say something. So Azin, um, let's just quickly sneak you in here. And uh... I just wanted to share my experience as well. I mean, I'm very new to this and I didn't even have the oil. I don't have it yet, but I did this uh, experience. I, I just wanted to follow it and I did it. And uh, uh, the moment of the stillness I had, um i didn't have the visions but like i don't know it was like i couldn't see it but i know it's there mm -hmm. and then it also now like my eyes hurt so much and uh but it was quite a strong and i just feel like i have changed uh so much uh during the session compared to before oh good thank you yeah, yeah. Thank, you. thank you so much. All right, we are going to bring this to completion. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, if you would like, we are considering, we're thinking we'll do another session, um, at least one more next week. Uh, if you would like, go ahead and put yes in the chat so we know um, if this is something we should do. And if so, we, you would need your assemblage point oil and your etheric cords oil along with your type. So um, maybe we can put that in the chat if Sam is here. Um, I'm seeing some yeses. Um, yeah, I think it's really special. Uh, I really appreciate that Greg is willing to do this with us. Um, great. Just ordered those, Sarah. Fantastic. They're part of the kit for the working the type. All right, let's just take a moment, put our hands on our hearts, thank ourselves, appreciate ourselves, thank the plants, appreciate the plants, and know that we're changed. We may not even know how yet, but take a moment to anchor what you feel right now, whatever you've received, and know that you have the support of these plants going forward. They're available to you for transformation, for awakening, for coming home. Okay, thank you everyone. Blessings.